What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a counter fairy deck profile because there is a new counter trap coming out in Power of the Elements. Now we're going to talk about that when we get into the video but make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one if you guys enjoy and keep in mind that we upload here five days a week so that means deck profiles, combo videos, product openings, duels, all that good stuff is right here on the channel. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting for way too long but I do want to say that counter fairy is a deck that I haven't done in a long time and I think it's a very underrated rated deck or underrepresented deck that you guys can play and have fun with and even take to a local level and maybe even win at that local level so with that let's get into the video all right so just before we get started in today's video i haven't actually done counter fairy in some time however the reason i wanted to revisit this in power of the elements a set that's coming out in like two to three weeks from the time you guys are seeing this video is a new counter trap card and that is draco utopian's aura this card is a brand new counter trap this card is absolutely nuts i'm gonna read it out to you guys and this is the whole reason i wanted to do this deck and it pretty much reads when you're opponent activates a monster effect on the field you negate the activation as a counter trap so it's pretty much like a solemn strike and if you do you get to destroy that monster then you can actually banish a monster from your hand and if you do special summon that monster that was just destroyed but its effects are negated so essentially think about it this way what's one of the most meta relevant cards in the game right now baron if you have this set and your opponent has a Baron to floor, tries to activate the effect, you can actually negate the Baron to floor, destroy the card, and if you have a monster that you can pitch in your hand, you can pitch that card from your hand, and then from there you get to get your own Baron. Yes, its effects are negated, but you get a free big body on your side of the field. So this card is really, really cool, and I really wanted to do this deck just because of this card. But let's get started off with the deck profile now. We are starting off, of course, with Triple Bountiful Artemis. This is one of the best cards in the deck. Each time a counter trap is activated, you get to draw a free card. And as you guys can see, this deck can draw and get through the deck really fast because essentially, when you're playing so many cards you want to see as many as possible so three bountiful artemis is very important you really want to see this as your first normal summon getting ariadne is the reason this deck is pretty much playable the reason for that is because if it's in the pendulum scale you don't have to pay life points to activate counter traps or you don't have to discard cards to activate counter traps so essentially it makes all the solemn cards free of cost there's no pay life points cost it makes your ultimate providence so that you don't have to discard a card for it so this card essentially makes all your counter traps no cost which means that now you can just freely activate your counter traps like the regular traps not having to worry about the life point cost and putting yourself too low not worrying about have to have the cards in your hand the entire reason essentially why this deck is playable is because of guiding ariadne and then we're playing two barrier statue of the heavens yes light isn't the best barrier statue to have because some decks can actually play through the light one however it's still a really good card to have because it makes a lot of opponents plays really wonky and really weird and on top of that it's really easy to summon this deck with something that ties to the brethren but before we get into that i want to continue here because i don't want to get ahead of myself i think this deck is just really really cool so we are playing two of the barrier statue that's it for the monsters as you guys can see we're playing a very low monster account and that's why it's super important in this deck to get through your cards as fast as possible because you do need to see a monster or two to at least win the game right it's really important in that sense so you are going to be playing these monsters but because this deck does kind of struggle through monster boards because if you are forced to go second or even if you're forced to go first and you don't have access to something like you're guiding ariadne then what ends up happening is you have problems beating your opponent's board because you sometimes won't have access to your barrier statue either so for that reason we actually are playing two super polymerization in the main deck and i think this card is really really good in today's format it's going to be also i think really good into splite format as well because it's a card that your opponent essentially can't respond to and the really cool thing about super poly is it gives you a body on the field that you otherwise might not have so super poly is really really powerful i think it's just good into so many decks in today's format and i think you can't not play it it's really good going first because you can just set it and bait your opponent that way but it's also just really good going second because if you are forced to go second that's what this deck kind of struggles with the most now you do have cards like solemn strike and goes in and rivalry that are still really good going second trap cards so don't get me wrong it's not the worst going second however super poly just makes it so much easier when your opponent has a board and you're like all right i'm just gonna super poly and get rid of everything you have so that's why we're playing two super poly here and then we're playing three extravagance again like i said you could play prosperity but you want to see as many cards as possible like i said so for that reason you want to play extravagance because it's going to get you extra cards to your hand which means that you could potentially get into your guarding you could potentially get into your battle for artemis you get into more traps so you definitely want to go into extravagance here now you could play duality but the reason i'm not playing duality is because this card right here ties of the brethren this card is insanely powerful so for anyone who doesn't know this card pretty much says pay 2000 life points target a level four or lower monster you control for the rest of the turn after this card resolves you cannot special summon monsters also special summon two monsters from your deck with the same type and attribute and level as that monster but with different names so the really cool thing is if you normal summon your bard for artemis and you activate ties of the brethren you get to special summon an ariadne and a barrier statue straight from your deck and that makes it so that you have multiple bodies on the field so it can help you win games and that's really really important with this card so that's why you're really playing this out at three and you don't want to play the duality because this card is just way too important for you but the also really cool thing about this card is that it says for the rest of this turn you can't special summon so it's really nice because if you are forced to go second you can go super poly special summon a monster by breaking your opponent's board and then you can 
normal summon your bountiful Artemis, and then you can go ties to the brethren because it says for the rest of the turn. So keep that in mind. So this is really powerful. Then, like I said earlier, you're playing Utopia Draco's Aura. I read this card out too earlier. This card is so so powerful. I think this card is so good into a lot of decks. It's good going first, it's going going second. That's what's really cool about these cards, stuff like this, stuff like Psalm Strike, because they're counter traps, they can't be responded to essentially unless your opponent, I guess, has a red reboot. But other than red reboot, they can't really respond to this. And then from there, you're going to be able to break boards going second. You're going to be able to not let your opponent make boards if you're going first, sending these cards up. So we're playing three of this, three Solemn Strike, of course. Essentially, we're playing six Solemn Strike at the end of the day. So this is kind of nuts. So three Solemn Strike. We're playing the full Solemn Brigade, playing three Judgment as well as three Warning. Because again, if you can activate these with no cost, these cards are so, so powerful. So of course, you're going to be wanting to play the nine of them. And like I said, this card is pretty much Solemn Strike for you as well. So you're pretty much playing six copies of Solemn Strike. So this card is nuts. And then we're playing three Ultimate Providence here as well. Ultimate Providence is when it's a trap card or a monster effect is activated you can discard the same type of card and then if you do negate the activation and destroy it however the really cool thing is ariadne makes it so you don't have to discard cards so this is just a counter trap that pretty much says negate that's it it just says negate then we're playing another card that is essentially like solemn strike and this is the card that i was back and forth with i kind of wanted to play it i kind of wanted to play more board breakers back and forth with this card but i really really liked it because it says when your opponent's monster activates an effect you discard a card and negate the activation and the really cool thing is the discard is cost which means you also don't have to play the ariadne for the cost so it's really nice because sometimes if you're low on life points let's say and you don't have the ariadne ariadne makes it so that none of this matters anyways but if you don't have ariadne it's really cool because if you're low on life points you don't actually have to go on your solemn strike or rely on it you can actually hold the solemn strike in your hand and you can have the divine wrath and then that's still going to be a monster negate for you so divine wrath is really powerful and then for the only non counter traps we're playing we're playing three rivalry of the warlords as well as three goes in match now if this deck didn't stun your opponent enough I think these cards do the trick. Of course, the nice thing about this deck is you're all playing light fairy monsters, which means if you can have goals in a rivalry on the board, you're perfectly fine because each player can only control one attribute of a monster and then each player can only control one type of monster. In this case, we're only gonna control light monsters and fairy monsters. A lot of decks can't really play through the both of these. So that's why we're playing the six of these. We're just maxing them out because again, Super Poly is really good and don't get me wrong, it does not synergize with Super Poly that well. However, Super Poly is just kind of like the worst case backup option. And on top of that, your opponent may have outs to stuff like your rivalry or goes a match and that's why the super poly is really good so don't look at it in a sense of like oh but super poly doesn't synergize with rivalry yes but super poly is just so strong on its own if you happen to open the both of these honestly you can set both and then depending on what you're playing against because you're never really going to know what you're playing against game one right so depending on what you're playing against you have to make the best decision from there sometimes super poly can be the best decision sometimes rivalry and goes can be the best decision keep in mind that you guys are going to have a side deck if you take this to a locals or you take this to an event though that's really important because your siding patterns are very important i'm not showing you guys a side deck here but i just want to show you guys that this main deck is just so so powerful it pretty much just answers anything in today's meta now i'm not saying you're going to take this to a ycs or a regional and you're going to win that event but what i am saying is if you guys want to be competitive with this deck i think this is a really fun way to play it and it's also a really powerful way especially with the inclusion of this new card so then moving on to the extra deck the extra deck is very very simplistic we're playing three of the underworld goddess the reason we're playing three underworld goddess is because with ties of the brethren it's actually very easy to get four monsters on the board you're gonna get three just as soon as you normal summon and activate ties so if you can just normal summon a monster after that and let's say your opponent has a big boss monster that you can't really out you can just use your four monsters and their monsters to make the underworld world goddess so i think this card is really really important to play in this kind of deck now you're not making it that often i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not gonna say that you're gonna be making this all the time but it's very very clutch when you do make it i'm playing three gaga cowboy now cowboy is really really cool because again you're playing a bunch of level four monsters so unless you have barrier statue on your side of the field you can do a lot of poke damage with these guys and then at the end when you know your opponent is low on life points because you're just doing a bunch of poke turn after turn you can just go into cowboy and cowboy for game it, you'd be surprised how often this happens this happens pretty often and then the rest of the extra deck is just all super poly targets we're playing three starving venom three of the brand new card that's coming out of power of the elements as well which is garura wings of the resonant life this card just says two monsters with the same type and attribute but different names so this card is a really really good super poly target and then we are playing three mud dragon so mud dragon is kind of the opposite of this where it's kind of like two monsters with the same attribute but different types this one is the same attribute and same type. Mud Dragon just gives you another option for other decks. So a bunch of super poly targets, your cowboys that could potentially game your opponent, and Underworld Goddess just to pretty much out any monsters you can't otherwise out. So you guys can see 40 card main deck. It's very, very clean, very, very crisp. Now I really think you guys should try this deck out yourselves because I think this deck is very, very underrated. Now, again, like I said earlier in the video, you're not gonna be taking this to a regional or YCS and winning, but if you guys wanna take this to a locals, have some fun with it, play with your friends, even compete at the local level against some meta decks, I think this could be very, very fun. So try it out for yourselves. Don't knock you try it i think this deck is very very troll in terms of just making your opponents rage quit because you're just playing so many counter traps but 
it's also really fun for you. So I think you guys should really try it out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is Counter Fairy, my take on the deck for this format. Now, I think this deck is going to be very, very good post Power of the Elements just because that new Counter Trap is just such an insane card and it essentially has no drawback. Now, yes, keep in mind this deck is still a rogue tier deck, so you're not going to go to a YCS or a Nationals or a Regional and maybe win with it. However, if you guys want to take this to a local level, have some fun with it, play around with your friends, this is actually a really good deck and a really fun deck to play. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like the video and subscribe subscribe to the channel if you guys did enjoy also let me know if you guys have any opinions any of suggestions in the comment section down below that's how we get better together as a community thank you guys all for watching appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace